Thank you for this. I needed this for more background going into critical. I'm almost er <laughs> when I mess up my intros, I swear. And there's even more information I need to add on. So hold on, let me switch into Luna real quick. Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. This is Critical Role. The Critical, well, Campaign 1, the character bios. I'm getting some more background into it before I jump straight into Campaign 1. So I know most of the characters already, but this is more on their character, right? And chopped up, I'm pretty sure. So before I begin, I just want to say if you want to recommend me anything outside of Critical Role, you can. I watch everything. And also, uh, no need to ever donate to the channel to have me react to something. Donate to the channel completely if you want to. It's up to you. Um, and I appreciate it. Uh, and if you want to send me videos, Twitter and Instagram are the best place first. And then the comments are the last. So, yeah, this is Memphistig or uploaded by them. They said they do not own the footage. They took it. Oh, they took it from a video but cleaned up the transitions. Oh, cool. Sweet. So, shout out to them for cleaning it all up. And here we go. Let's go. Let's get more. And I'll be adding this to the playlist of my Critical Role stuff since Critical uh, or my Campaign 1 thing since campaign one i did the episode 25 which is like my first episode and then boom there i'll have uh, the i'll have this like in the middle of showing you getting getting my background on the episodes i hope that made sense jesus that was that was kind of rough but it's getting it don't worry it's getting better and subscribe if you want to be a part of the lunar dynasty right Blessing current up. name if you have ale then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw, a goliath of towering height and size, this barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat, okay. women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ale. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse, Grog felt only pity for this, <laughs> this terrified little thing. Okay. His disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and that left to die. That motherfucker Exiled is big. from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save saved him. It was the kindness of a gnome cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from death's edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, Grog can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches <laughs> or, or accompanying Scadlin to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ale. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information Love. on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. Under that unintimidating petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth okay. was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Tal'Dorei, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee-shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways, it wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. Just like okay. that, her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. 
every mm. druid leader to be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilben, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? Percy was the third of seven children. Before we go on to Percy, what I wanted to say about Keela. <sighs> Already like her a lot more than Beauregard. Born to a noble <laughs> family who lived far to the north in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. Okay. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Is that Dracula? Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwood's men. As they ran, Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Ooh. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Pike grew up in the outskirts of town, near the Bramble. Before we get to Pike, so, so Percy has absolutely... So, by this point, does Percy... Percy thinks all his parents are dead? Because I think I remember that in episode 25. He said they were all dead. Or, hmm, okay. Um, that is crazy. So, Percy's only a gunslinger? Is he a warlock? Or an entity just came to him saying, does he want revenge? Hmm. What? Her ancestors were a family of deep gnomes with quite an unfavorable reputation. Thievery, destruction, deep. and trickery left them with the curse of the last name Trickfoot. Saren Ray, the goddess of healing and redemption, had other plans for Pike's great-great-grandfather Wilhand, who left his family at a young age after a dream. A dream that changed the course of the Trickfoot family. Wilhand devoted his life to Saren Ray and pledged from then on that him and his family would live a life of service and devotion. Hmm. As a child, Pike seemed to have an affinity to heal. Whether it was animals, people, or even flowers, she felt she had a purpose in making things whole. Already sounding like a paladin. She studied and learned the ways to heal. Or a cleric. Magic. She lived a peaceful life, quiet and simple, until one day, Wilhand was captured and almost killed by a group of Goliath barbarians. One of the Goliaths took a stand against the murder of the innocent gnome, and he himself was beaten, bloodied, and left for dead, abandoned by his herd. Wilhand went to Pike for help. She prayed and healed this barbarian as best she could, bringing him back to life. When he awoke, she discovered his name was Grog Stonejaw. After that, they were the best of friends, a rather unlikely pair. Little did she know that in a few years' time, Grog would soon return the favor and bring her back from the clutches of death. After being killed in battle, Pike felt angry. She wanted to be stronger so that it would never happen again. She was killed. She spent four months at sea, training with the men and women aboard a ship called the Broken Howl. Gripping her holy symbol in one hand, and her morning star in the other, this time, Pike is ready. Oh, you haven't cool. heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, 
Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. Hmm. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. Cool. A loner much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the females swoon. <laughs> Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vaxil Dan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born oh, by twins. a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins okay. were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. But their cool reception among the elves there never warmed, and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. Okay. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother, and journey back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash, so they're... pressing the townspeople for answers. They learned of the day the dragon came. Okay. With their ties all severed, Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. Okay. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough. The way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so Sick. many of elves, Sick. Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxil Don quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this were world each other. were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Syngorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance. Mm -hmm. And after too many years of, of disdainful looks, yeah. the pair decided to leave his indifference behind mm -hmm. and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief, while Vax kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. And gives expert massages. What I like about um, the the difference between Vax and Vex telling their stories is that, like, you know, Vax told about, like, the, the place burning down and everything like that. But uh, Vex's perspective, uh, if this was intentionally done like this, she didn't really speak of it being burned down. And that could have to do with the, you know, the past little childhood trauma of the dad staying keeping a cold distance because i'm pretty sure the whole mixing the elven blood and the human blood of, of, of like a poor human would be looked down upon i like that and i like how like their their things did that their stories did that if that was intentionally done like that i also like how i really i see how they wrote their stories together like you know like ford jester it's it, instead here it was um uh, Grog, Pike, so it was Ashley and Ford were kind of like the, or Ashley and Travis were like the duo here, 
then um Liam and Laura were the duo here. I like it. I like how they did it. And I like I like how their characters are related. Uh, yeah, I just I, I like it. Yeah, I know Vox Machina is gonna be fucking oh man. I just gotta enjoy the rest of the campaign too. I'm on episode Oh, it's right here. Hey, one twenty seven. Um, as for, uh, that was me in the fields for a minute, man, and it's almost over. I feel like fucking campaign one's gonna sweep me off my feet. Alright, much love and light. I will see y'all in the next one. Enjoy your day.